are listening to Julia's Trucking Cafe News Hour. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Julia's Trucking Cafe. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I have lots of news to get to, so let's get right to it. Here shortly, we're going to be talking about where is Kay's Lynn, the title to this episode. This is a trucking company's daughter that has gone missing. I'll be talking about that here in just a few minutes. But first, a new mom risked her life to save a tanker truck driver just days after giving birth. A new mom is being hailed as a hero after she helped to rescue a tanker driver whose truck exploded in Indianapolis on the ramp at I-70 and 465. It was on the east side of Indianapolis, according to the fire department. After the crash, the truck caught fire after he laid it over on the ramp and 35-year-old Holly McNally, just given birth to her son earlier in the week, was traveling in a car with her mom after visiting Connor in the hospital when she saw the tanker truck on fire. McNally told the local news that she actually saw the semi on fire, then looked to the front of the semi when I saw a man on fire, like his head was burning. She told her mom she was stopping. I'm going over there. She says, and her mom says, no, you're not. I was like, yes, I am. McNally and another good Samaritan, 50-year-old Mitch Navery, raced to the side of the burning tanker truck, later identified as 59-year-old Jeffrey Denham. The two were able to use a coat to try to put the fire out and save Denham. Worried now that about the jet fuel, McNally and, and Navari carried Denham as best they could down an embankment. A minute later, the tanker truck exploded. Police soon arrived on the scene and Denham was taken to the hospital via ambulance. At that time, Denham is still listed in critical condition during that week. But... Um, I'm sure now he's out of the hospital and, you know, hopefully doing a lot better. And FMCSA found 8,000 violations in the first few weeks of the Federal Drug and Alcohol Database. The FMCSA says that their new online drug and alcohol database has identified thousands of violations in the first few weeks of operation. This happened February 21st when they released a statement highlighting the data collected since they started the clearinghouse rule that went into effect on January 6th. They say that almost 8,000 positive substance abuse tests have been detected and identified in the first few weeks of operation of the clearinghouse. According to them, there are currently approximately 650,000 clearinghouse registrants. Quote, we've seen encouraging results from the drug and alcohol clearinghouse, but there's still work to do to ensure we identify more drivers who should not be behind the wheel. The Clearinghouse is a positive step and the agency continues to work closely with industry, law enforcement, and our state partners to ensure its implementation is effective. The Clearinghouse is intended to improve highway safety by giving law enforcement, employers, and other authorities real-time access to a CDL holder's drug and alcohol records. Those who are required to register with the Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse include drivers who respond to employer consent requests or would like to view their clearinghouse record when applying for a job. Quote, uh, also, substance abuse professionals, employers of CDL or uh, commercial learner permit, CLP workers. While truck drivers were not required to immediately register with the clearinghouse, uh, by the January 6th deadline, they must be registered in order to respond to an employer's request for consent 
prior to pre-employment query or other full query being conducted. So in other words, long story short, your employer before they're gonna hire you will run a query through this clearinghouse to see if you violated any sort of, or got popped for a drug screen and showed up what I call dirty and failed a drug screen, they'll be able to access that information. Or when you're doing a random drug screen, they can they need to check it at least once a year. And Arizona shares a terrifying video of a trucker's deadly encounter with a wrong way driver. The Arizona Department of Public Safety, or DPS as they're called, released dash cam video of a wrong way crash involving a motorist and a truck driver last month. The fatal crash occurred around 2.30, quarter to three in the morning in January. The, a 31 year old motorist can be seen traveling north in the southbound lanes of Loop 202. The truck driver spots the wrong way vehicle and can be heard yelling, wrong way driver, oh my God, as he tries to take evasive action to avoid the car. But as he swerves left, so does the car, resulting in the head-on collision. Um, the driver of the car did not survive the collision. The truck driver wasn't physically injured, but he was seriously shaken up. Police are still working, well, at that time, were working to uh, determine whether drugs or alcohol were factored in the crash. Um, there was a video at one time, but I think it has been taken down. It was on the graphic side. And this next story, if you've never seen a walking trailer floor, I am going to attempt this time to ch uh, try to add the video to this show. Uh, hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, I don't get a copyright strike. But um, I, So let's watch the video of how a walking trailer floor really works. So that was pretty cool. I've never seen a walking trailer floor operate like that before. That was a pretty neat deal. So now let's get back to the news. A man facing 50, 50 child porn charges is killed by a semi after he runs out in front of the semi on a Florida interstate. Florida man was arrested last week on dozens of child, or I should say the week of February 24th, my bad, um, of dozens of child pornography charges. He died earlier that morning after he ran in front of a semi. Incident happened about 2.45 in the morning in Sarasota County, Florida. Florida troopers say that 65-year-old Gerald Nicholas was standing on the shoulder of Interstate 75 at around mile marker 209 when he suddenly ran into the lanes of the interstate and was hit by an oncoming semi-truck. He was pronounced dead at the scene. As far as I'm concerned, 
one more pedophile off the doggone out of this world. You know, I, I don't agree with pedophilia whatsoever. I try not to uh, have my opinions in this show, but you know, I am a opinionated granny truck driver. But anyway, on to more news. Georgia cops call out a truck driver for driving for miles on his rims. The Georgia Department of Public Safety took to Facebook to chide a truck driver for knowingly driving for miles on his rims. That was their violation of the week, uh, including uh, who allegedly failed. Uh, another one was a, a allegedly failed a sobriety test. He drove, this driver drove five and a half miles on his rims because he needed to take the wood to the mill. Uh, his all, license was also suspended. So they're warning everybody, don't be ruining Georgia highways by doing this silly crap. And now this happened in Europe. A truck driver's U-turn maneuver earned him six months in jail. Now he's going down the wrong way. He's going like on an off ramp to turn around to go the right way on the interstate. I'm like, seriously, dude? A video that you'll find in the bottom of this article um, that you can find at juliastruckatcafe.com under the cafe menu tab in the show notes. You will be able to witness the, you know, watch this for yourself. Uh, it features the English truck driver's dangerous driving has gone viral worldwide. The incident was captured at the end of January. Uh, but it wasn't shared by police until the end of February. Uh, Stanfordshire police, the, the driver of this lorry was jailed for six months and disqualified from driving for 15 months when he was caught driving dangerously on the M6 toll last month. Thankfully, no one was injured. See, the English, they don't let drivers get away with nothing. They caught him. They threw his ass in jail and they took his license away for a year and a half for doing a stupid maneuver like that. So they definitely do not play in England. And a train takes a truck right off the tracks. Well, you shouldn't be trying to race a train. I love it when, you know, motorists try to, to race us and cut us off and everything and we're, uh, a uh, train on wheels is how I like to call it. A motorist in Texas has caught a violent truck or train collision on camera on Tuesday. There again, the videos in the bottom of this article. It was captured in Cibolo, Texas. It was shared by a YouTube user. My route to work was blocked, but the train cleared it for me. Truck was truck driver was luckily out of the truck on the phone when it happened. He said, sorry about the curse words, but there again, um, hopefully with that previous video that I shared, I won't get a copyright strike. Um, if I don't, then I, in the future, I'll be trying to share more videos. It, it takes a little bit of rigging to be able to share the videos with you because I'm not streaming this. I'm recording this, so it's um, a little bit different. And now for our top story. Where is Keelin? And hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right. A Georgia trucker is pleading for help from the trucking community in locating his daughter who has been missing since January. Eric Roberts, owner of Dalton, Georgia-based Eric Roberts Trucking, is offering now, I'm sure it's over $6,000 for any information leading to the return of his daughter, 20-year-old Keeslyn Noel Roberts. Keeslyn, she was last seen January 18th at the Flying J truck stop in Resaca, Georgia. Her white Toyota Corolla with her belongings inside was found at the truck stop by her family. On February 6th, the sheriff's office issued a press release stating that they had responded to a 911 call about a suspicious female, presumably Keeslyn, at the Flying J. Keeslyn had reportedly entered an employee-only kitchen area and entered into a, an altercation with an employee. She fled before officers arrived, but police found a bag containing 
Keeslin's identification, cash, debit card, and phone charger on the scene. She is 5'6", 125 pounds, with blonde hair and blue eyes. She has a sea turtle tattoo on her right arm and uh, gauged ear piercings. Uh, there is an active probation violation warrant out of Whitfield County for Kingsland that was issued on January 17th. Now, she may have her hair dyed, so she may not be blonde anymore. I'm going to say this, and hopefully this does not upset the Roberts family, but I am hoping to goodness she has not been sex trafficked. They have found her clothes update they have found her clothes by a dumpster at the flying j in rosaka if you have seen her she's a very cute young lady there again she is uh 20 years old she's 5'6, 125 pounds with blonde hair blue eyes um if you have seen her please call the georgia sheriff's department murray county at 706-629-1244. That's 706-629-1244. Or uh, Eric White at 706-695-4592. Again, that's Detective Eric White, 706-695-4592. I'm doing this as a public service broadcast. You know, I am not affiliated with the Roberts family at all. I do not even know them. But let's try to help find this young girl. I will keep y'all posted on if I find any more updates. Uh, You know, hopefully we can find her safe and sound. And then she just got upset and, you know, decided to escape for a little while. But anyway, on to other news. Two are arrested after cops find $12 million worth of meth and cocaine in a trailer. An Arizona task force discovered hundreds of pounds of illicit drugs during a recent traffic stop in near Kingman on Interstate 40. The massive drug bust was made uh, the end of February at around mile marker 33 west of Kingman, Arizona, according to a news release from the Bullhead City Police Department. Around 6.30 in the evening, officers of the task force uh, pulled over a semi-truck on Interstate 40. With the aid of a drug-sniffing dog, officers approximately uh, confiscated 168 kilograms kilograms of cocaine and 220 pounds of meth. The combined street value of the drugs is estimated to be around $12.7 million. Police arrested uh, Bayan 30 and Ahmed 36 and booked them into the Mojave County Jail on charges of transportation of dangerous drugs and narcotics drugs for sale. Um, They did not provide information on why they stopped the truck initially. And now it's time for a short break. This episode of Julia's Truck at Cafe is brought to you by My Patriot Supply. As truck drivers, we all know what it's like to be at a shipper's or receiver's and have to wait to be loaded for hours on end. Am I right? Especially produce coolers and paper mills. That's why you need to be prepared with extra food in your truck. Especially with the bad weather coming in, like it is over here in Kansas, Up in the Dakotas and Minnesota, 90 was shut down, Interstate 94 was shut down, along with 29. What are you going to do if there's no food and a truck stop wasn't without power? That's why you need to stay prepared with My Patriot Supply. Now it's not what you're thinking. My Patriot Supply is delicious emergency food. They have food kits that are good up to 25 years. They come in a slimline tote that you can easily store in your food pantry or under your bunk. I could speak from experience. After living through Hurricane Katrina, we were without power for 10 days, me, my mother and son and I. If it weren't for the MREs that were flown into us, we wouldn't have any food. There was four 60-foot pine trees that broke in half during that storm and crossed my driveway and landlocked me in. That's when my Patriot Supply would have come in handy. If I knew then what I know now about my Patriot Supply, I definitely have some food, some of this food stockpiled in my pantry. 
Now for a limited time, you could get a one week supply of food in a handy and neat looking ammo can like you see here for just $39. Look at all that food you get. It's a week's worth of breakfast, lunch, and dinners just for 39 bucks. How do you get it? Where do you go, do you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Just go to my website at juliastruckercafe.com, click on the emergency food supply tab, scroll down and click on any of the images to get find out more information and get yours today. They even offer gluten-free food for under $100. Winter weather is here. What would you do if the interstate was shut down, just like I was talking about? You need to get My Patriot Supply and get it today. Welcome back to Julia's Truck and Cafe Truck and News Hour. Thank you again for returning and joining me. Now let's get back to the news. In this story, over 120 Penske workers were laid off after a loss of a contract. More than 100 Penske workers in Michigan were laid off due to the loss of a major contract. Penske Logistics told workers at the facility in Coldwater, Michigan that they would be laid off when the facility closes at the end of April. At least 120 warehouse workers and truck drivers were affected by the layoff. The layoffs came after Penske Logistics learned they had lost a major contract with Ford Motor Company in a competitive bidding process, which happens a lot. You overbid or something, somebody comes in, they bid under, they underbid you, and you know you lose the contract. Penske says that there are other positions within the company that are open to the layoff workers. Excuse me, couldn't help that. In May 2019, Penske Logistics announced plans to close a Fort Wayne, Indiana facility and lay off about 80 workers that I reported on that. And a trucking company is ordered to pay um, damages for coercing a driver who via, uh, uh, who they made violate safety rules. I'm stammering and stuttering again. Good Lord. The driver said that the company told him to violate hours of service regulations and ignored complaints about defective equipment. The Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA as we know, ordered a now defunct Connecticut trucking company to pay a driver who complained and then quit after allegedly facing retaliation for refusing to violate safety rules. The OSHA ordered Hartford, Connecticut-based Universal Trucking Solutions, LLC, and co-owner Juan Ramirez to pay more than $150,000 to an unnamed truck driver after investigators determined that the company had retaliated against the driver for raising safety concerns. OSHA investigators found, I quote from the news release, that the company and Ramirez retaliated against a driver who repeatedly voiced concerns to manage about faulty vehicle maintenance, including missing or inoperative headlights, air pressure leaks, and company's direction to violate FMCSA hours of service regulations while driving. Management of Ramirez later changed the driver's work schedule, resulting in a reduction of the driver's pay. The driver resigned in 2017 after concerns that U.S. Department of Transportation officials would confiscate the commercial driver's license and their livelihood or life could be lost because of the defective truck and because their employer forced them to ignore hours of service. The investigators determined that Universal Trucking Solutions actions were in violation of whistleblower protections and they, uh, the STAA protects workers in certain industries from retaliation from their employers when they report safety violations. United Trucking Solutions was ordered to pay the driver $8,351.81 in back pay and interest, $75,000 in punitive damages, and $50,000 in compensatory damages for mental pain and emotional distress, in addition to $21,378.05 in attorney's fees. Quote, truck drivers are protected from retaliation when they refuse to violate laws put into place to protect their safety and health, said OSHA regional administrator. Quote, this order reinforces the agency's commitment to protect workers who exercise their right to a safe workplace and refuse to place themselves and the public at risk. So kudos to that driver. 
Now, this story is great for anybody who loves to barbecue. And i one of those type of people. If you love trucking and you love barbecue, you've got to take a look at how one Texas trucker is combining the two worlds for a good cause. Veteran trucker and Texas resident Terry Folsom was originally fe featured on Ridiculous Rides on the ba Barcroft Cars YouTube channel for his 1997 Peterbilt 379 with a 76 foot barbecue grill slash pit trailer that he says is the biggest in the world. The trailer features 24 smoking compartments and a firebox in the shape of the state of Texas at the rear of the trailer. In the video in this article, Folsom uses his grill for good, firing it up, give thanks to a group of local first responders. Folsom says that the trailer weighs 80,000 pounds and could cook 8 to 12,000 pounds of meat at a time, enough to feed thousands of people. Setting up at a cookout takes planning and effort. The oversized truck requires escort vehicles, and it takes about two and a half hours to fire up the grill to the correct temperature. But Folsom says that the truck combines his passion for grilling meat and trucking. You can view this video, like all the other videos, at juliastruckatcafe.com. Um, go to the cafe menu. You think I'd have this memorized by now. <laughs> cafe menu, and then go down to the show notes and look for this article. It would be under episode 80. And look what some silly shitting dump truck driver went ahead and done. He hit the doggone wrong button inside his truck because I used to pull a dump truck. I never did this. Troopers say driver errors to blame for the trailer mishap. He stood his trailer up on end, hit the bridge, and the trailer came became disconnected from the truck. Now there is a huge piston that makes that bed go up in the air, and I'm just wondering, you know, it came completely disconnected from the piston and all. Troopers are investigating after discovering a trailer resting vertically against an interstate overpass in Indiana. Indiana State Police District posted about the trailer at 12 o'clock in the morning on Thursday morning. It says that the dump truck trailer struck an overpass on northbound I-65 at around mile marker 248 near Crown Point. An update to this, they have released new information. Last night at approximately 10.17, a semi hauling a dump trailer was northbound on 65 at the 248 over 8 mile marker. At some point, the driver of the truck inadvertently activated the dump control, resulting in the trailer bed tilting to the upright position. The trailer struck the 113th Avenue overpass as the truck drove underneath. The trailer came to rest upright in the middle of the roadway. The driver, David Chavez, 31, from Chicago, was able to stop the tractor shortly after the impact. He wasn't hurt. The trailer, a 2005 Superior Dump Trailer, owned by CNM Trucking Service, located in Chicago, was towed by Midnight Blue from the scene. The trailer was empty, thank goodness, at the time of the crash. That would have been a big mess if it was full. The roadway was closed for about three hours for scene cleanup and bridge inspection. Crown Point Police also assisted at the scene and, you know, etc., etc. But yeah, you know, don't ever mess with the levers of a dump trailer while you're driving down the road. And you might, some trucking companies might be a little bit worried about this. Hackers breached a major broker IT systems and exposed carrier bank accounts at the end of November, or end of February, I mean. Total Quality Logistics, TQL, I have pulled loads for them before, has confirmed that it was a victim of a serious data breach and exposed sensitive carrier information. Just before 6 in the morning on February 27th, TQL stated on their company website that we have confirmed a data breach of our IT systems which compromised the security of our online portal for carriers. TQL says that so far there have been less than 20 carriers identified. 
uh, with the automatic clearinghouse payment theft may have occurred that they are working on t contacting those carriers. They say that hackers were able to access sensitive carrier account information, including tax ID numbers and their bank account numbers. TQL says they have taken account to correct the uh, data breach. Uh, of course, they're going to issue a statement saying, one of our highest priorities have been and continues to be the security of your information. Well, apparently your portal wasn't too secure, was it? You know, uh, just saying. The company also says they're teaming up with law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, to combat the data breach. For now, TQL is re recommending some <laughs> is recommending that all carriers assume that their bank account and tax ID information that has been compromised and take extra security steps. These steps include contact your bank or financial institution, your TQL account is with and notify them your information may have been compromised, Specify especially your bank account routing and tax ID numbers. TQL also recommends that carriers place a fraud alert on their credit files. And a truck crash causes a semi-trailer to plummet over a guardrail, spilling thousands of pounds of yogurt. God, what a mess. New York State Police say that the weather was likely a factor in a messy two-semi-truck crash on Interstate 86. This happened again the end of February. Police say that a semi driven by Illinois based driver, I can't even pronounce his name, was traveling on Interstate 86 when the truck jackknifed during the winter weather conditions. Can we say go a little faster? Um, that's me talking. The truck came to a stop blocking the westbound lanes of the interstate. A second driver, truck, excuse me, a second truck driven by Ohio resident. Mr. Stacy then struck the jackknife truck, which disconnected Stacy's trailer from his truck and caused his load of yogurt to spill out onto Interstate 76 or 86. Excuse me, I just can't talk today. Stacy's trailer continued crashing over a guardrail down onto an access ramp below, spilling out more of the yogurt. The Bemis Point Fire Department described the crash as two commercial vehicles collided with several personal vehicles, causing several crash abnormalities. Yeah, you think? One involving a separation of an 18-wheeler with half rolling down the second deck with several disconnected axles, like you saw in the previous picture. Stevenson was taken to the hospital for treatment of abdominal pain. No other injuries were reported. Troopers say that about 40,000 pounds of yogurt and 100 gallons of diesel fuel were spilled in the crash. New York State Police said that several secondary crashes occurred in the backups caused by this initial crash. The crash remains under investigation at that time. And a semi hits a swerving car as cops close lanes in this dash cam video that's on the bottom of this article there again. I'm trying to do the videos, but I just don't want to get a copyright strike. A trucker swerves to avoid a car as drivers stopping for police on a Pennsylvania highway, but he wasn't able to avoid a major collision. Um, while traveling north on I-95, the dash camera explains that he saw the police had the right two lanes shut down. As he came upon it, he switched to the left outer lane to avoid traffic. While doing so, he saw the police shut down the two lanes from the left and then pulled into the left lane without warning. He was braking and started to head on onto the shoulder to avoid a collision when a Lincoln in front of him did the same. Once the brakes were locked up, he was going along for the ride. And this next story, a truck driver sentenced for cargo theft caper involving 900 laptops. A truck driver has been sentenced to prison for stealing several hundred laptops, computers, worth nearly a quarter of a million dollars, according to authorities in Georgia. 51-year-old Decatur, Alabama-based truck driver, uh, Mr. Kevlin, was sentenced to a year in prison followed by three years of supervised release um, 
and was ordered to pay $245,000 in restitution. Prosecutors say that Kevlin took part in a cargo theft scheme in the summer of 2017, which is detailed from the news release. And I quote, on June 21st, 2017, Acer Incorporated contracted with a trucking company to deliver 15 pallets of 900 Acer Chromebook laptops which were valued at $245,000 from a packaging facility in California, and he was going to a Costco distribution center in College Park, Georgia, which is just south of Atlanta. Due to problems with the purchase order paperwork, Costco rejected the shipment once it arrived. Uh, he, Kevlin was then hired to drive the tractor trailer containing the laptops back to California to return the merchandise. Once he took control of the truck, however, he reported it to be empty. He later claimed to have traveled to Chicago to pick up another load of cargo before returning to California. Contrary to his statement, GBI agents, Georgia you know, uh, Bureau investigators, obtained records from a way station in Ringgold, Georgia, where Kevlin stopped on his way to Chicago. The records indicate that his truck weighed several thousand pounds more than would be expected for an empty tractor trailer consistent with a load of 900 laptops. Um, they traveled, the investigators traveled to Chicago where they used GPS information from the truck to locate surveillance footage from a Chicago warehouse. They really tracked him down. The video showed a tractor trailer matching his, this Kevlin's arriving on the evening of July 5th, 2017. Approximately 15 pallets were then unloaded by the on-site janitor and several other unknown men. The pallets matched the appearance of the Acer laptops. When later located and interviewed, the janitor described being contacted by the owner of a nearby business to unload the truck for $250. On the 18th of July, 2017, he later loaded the same pallets onto another truck with a different driver for an additional $250. Authorities say that they obtained gambling records from the Virginia River Hotel and Casino in Mesquite, Nevada, which showed that Kevlin gambled with over $11,000 in cash. Quote, the conviction demonstrates the great work of law enforcement at all levels to investigate and prosecute major cargo theft affecting Georgia and our surrounding states. Uh, they remain committed to working with our local and federal partners to address these types of crimes. So, if you're new into trucking, don't think you're going to steal cargo because we are tracked within a block of where the truck is. So they know how to get you. Don't even bother trying to steal anything that's not yours. And if you enjoy my show and would like to support me, the links to do so are in the description and box below. You can either make a monthly support or a one-time donation. Please subscribe to the show. I greatly appreciate all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for continued listening and everything. And I, um, I do this. Whoa, sometimes I mess this up so bad. So greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate all of you trying to listen to me as I stumble through all this. Like I said, I'm a truck driver, not a video or YouTube creator or anything like that. I'm just trying to do another option for everybody who doesn't like to listen to a podcast or can't really figure out how to do a podcast, but they're on video, uh, YouTube all the time. So I'm, I'm so sorry about all my stumbling and stuff like that. I know I apologize every single episode, but I really am. I feel really bad. But please also subscribe to my email list where I will send you the show notes, the articles right to your inbox so you don't have to dig around or hunt around for them. Um, each week when I have something new going on, it's going to be in the email list. And soon I'm going to be having giveaways. So I will tell you more about that in a new episode that I'm going to record here shortly. So thank you so much. Please, again, subscribe to the channel. Again, I apologize for stumbling through and this kind of thing. But take care. I hope everybody's staying safe out there. And we'll see you until next.
have been listening to Julia's Truckin' Cafe Truckin' News Hour. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Take care. Have a blessed day.